price of phones is going up fast, but why? Like, how can Apple get away with charging nearly $1,500 for a top-spec iPhone? Or Samsung, $1,600 for an S20 Ultra? And maybe more confusing for some is OnePlus, a company that has built their entire reputation on creating affordable flagships. Their latest phone is $1,000. Is the world going crazy? Are we gonna be lining up in a few years' time to sell our organs so we can afford the next phone? Well, maybe. But the point is, what I'm trying to say here is that while I'm not gonna defend high pricing, there are seven key reasons why phones are getting so expensive that I just don't think a lot of people are acknowledging. Also, massive thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. The first thing is Qualcomm. Qualcomm are the guys who make the Snapdragon chipsets that power pretty much every high-end Android phone. And while they clearly make amazing hardware, they also cause a bit of a cost problem. See, they have no competition. If a company like OnePlus wants to have the best performance, then they've got no option but to use whatever Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon chipset is, in this case, the 865. And then because Qualcomm's got all this power, this year they've basically told companies, if you wanna have our chip, then you've also gotta buy our expensive 5G modem to go alongside it. So whether or not a smartphone maker wants 5G, 5G. They're paying for it. And it gets worse because as well as the chip and the modem, Qualcomm will also give you a set of guidelines. The big one being that your phone needs to have a large amount of space inside it. So if you're wondering why smartphones, especially this year, are leaping up in size, this might well be part of the reason. Because you've got to remember, a company can't just make their phone taller and keep everything else the same. They've then got to make the screen bigger so people don't complain about a massive board around the sides. And then they've got to have a bigger battery to power this display, as well as the more power-hungry Snapdragon chip. And then add to all all of that, if the company actually wants to take advantage of that 5G modem they paid for, then they've got to buy additional radio frequency modules and put them all around the phone. This costs money. So if you're wondering why OnePlus has suddenly hiked up the prices for their latest phones, I would guess that at least a part of that is Qualcomm steering them in that direction. Also, if you're enjoying the video, by the way, a sub to the channel would be amazing. Number two, the second thing is that smartphones are getting better. And that sounds like common sense, obviously, they're not getting worse, but I feel like when a lot of people complain about the prices of these phones, they're actually missing this point. See, technology is going to improve each year. So it's true, if every year Samsung just released the exact same phone, but with slightly more up-to-date technologies each time, we probably should expect prices to stay fairly constant. But that's not what's happening. It's not just a case that each year we see a slight internal spec bump to keep up with the times. If it was, our smartphones would still look like this. Every year we get designs that push boundaries further, more intelligent cameras, more advanced materials, and naturally that's got to cost more. Not to mention that phones now have like three times the screen area of when they started. So as well as all that new tech, everything else has to be scaled up accordingly. And remember, whilst it is getting more expensive to buy the highest end phone each year, it's getting cheaper to buy a good smartphone each year. There's probably no better example of my point than this. In the US, the average price of a smartphone has fallen every year continuously since 2011. Because because phones are getting so much better, people no longer need to buy the highest end, so every year they can get away with spending less and less. Because the highest end phones are the ones people talk about and the ones that grab the headlines, it creates this kind of distorted view that all phones are more expensive, when all that's really happening is the high end is becoming higher. But now that's out of the way, why are these top-end phones just so expensive? Well, one important thing is selling costs. The actual process of selling a phone can cost companies a ton of money, which also has to get added to the price. Let's take the absolute top-end iPhone 11 Pro Max. You can get this for around $1,380 in Mexico. But here in the UK, you'll pay the equivalent of $1,880. There's an element of currency conversions in those differences, but it's mostly two things. Sales taxes. In most countries, whenever a product is sold, the government takes a cut. In the US, it's pretty low. Most states sit at around 7%, but in the UK, it's 20. And then there's operational costs. The costs of running a store, the costs of hiring employees. This varies massively based on the country. These selling costs are a big part of why here in the UK, we get a terrible deal compared to, for example, people in India. Like, for example, this top-end OnePlus 8 Pro is the equivalent of $1,120 here in the UK. In India, 785. It also helps in this case that India is where a lot of OnePlus phones are actually put together, but hopefully you're starting to see just how much of a difference these selling costs alone can make to a phone's price. But there's more, because every aspect of the chain of production of a smartphone is expensive, and it's getting more expensive. As an example, take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S20. The phone is priced at 800 pounds here in the UK, but its bill of components will be around 340 pounds based on past years. So it would be easy to look at this and think Samsung is making 460 pounds of profit per phone, which would be great, but also 
wrong. For starters, after you take out the sales tax, which is included in that £800 price, Samsung's only actually taking about 640 But okay, that's still a fair bit of money, but remember, that component cost is only one of many, many costs. You've got manufacturing, the machines, the factories, the production lines, they all have to be rented or bought. You've got the employees, everyone from the people that put the phones together to the people who solve your problems over the phone. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Plus, as chipsets become more and more minute and sophisticated, the failure rate is higher. As things stand with the current chips based on a 7 nanometer fabrication process, about 30% of them fail. They just have to be chucked or maybe potentially recycled. Research and development. You've got to remember that for every beautiful finish you see on a retail phone, a company's tried 15 ones that they eventually scrapped. For every successful feature, like 100 times zoom on the S20 Ultra, there's been 5 or 6 ones that never saw the light of day. And then advertising costs. I've seen this one firsthand. I'm not allowed to tell you which brand it was for, but last year I was on set for a commercial for a smartphone launch, and it was crazy. The company had rented out an entire warehouse. They'd got a Hollywood film production crew. They'd got like 100 actors and extras on that set. And yet, after it was all done and edited, they just canceled the project because apparently it no longer fit the message they wanted to send for their phone. Plus, the retailers who then end up selling you the Samsung phones like Amazon, like T-Mobile, they're gonna want to take their own 5-10% to cut on top of that. So, after all these costs, Samsung doesn't make 150% profit like it initially seems. Not even 50. If I had to guess, I would say 10% per phone on average. They'll make more money on their top-end phones like the higher storage options and their S20 Ultra, but this figure gives you an idea. Apart from Apple, who benefits Benefits from having full control over every part of what goes into their phones, most smartphone makers have seen profits falling, not rising. But there is still profit, and when you take a step back, considering the volumes of phones these companies sell, it's a lot of money. And while so far I've told you some legitimate reasons why prices should be rising, there is also an element of craftiness from the end of the companies, something that I'm going to call the luxury effect. And it started with the iPhone 10. Up until the iPhone 10. Apple's phone pricing followed a fairly uninteresting trend. The first iPhone started at $500, and this price slowly trickled upwards, but barely. Even nearly 10 years on with the iPhone 7, you could still buy it for $649. But that changed the year after. In 2017, Apple pulled a bit of a fast one. They launched three phones, an iPhone 8 to replace the 7, an 8 Plus to replace the 7 Plus, and these two phones were similarly priced last year. But then also the iPhone 10 at $1,000. And they got away with it. The way they pitched their phones was, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus, there are flagships. There are replacements if you wanted to upgrade from the 7 and the 7 Plus. But the iPhone 10, well, that's a luxury item. Even though Apple knew full well the iPhone 10 would sell by the bucket load. By pitching this as the luxury phone, the optional extra, they avoided people comparing its price to their past phones. They made it seem incomparable. And then following this move, the entire market reacted. Samsung, for example, saw the opportunity to hike up the price of their phones. And more recently, their S20 Ultra uses this exact exact same luxury effect to get away with its price tag of up to $1,600. Because Samsung also released a Galaxy S20 and an S20 Plus, which sit as the technical replacements for last year's S10 and S10 Plus, they can dodge the price comparisons by saying that the Ultra is just unlike anything else out there. Okay, so cost of production is rising. Companies are getting craftier with their pricing, but there's still a missing piece of the puzzle. If these top-end phones are so expensive, why are people still buying them? I mean, in terms of pre-orders, the highest-end S20 Ultra made up 50% of the sales of the whole S20 lineup. But why? Why is it all of a sudden that people's willingness to pay for a phone has grown? Well, it's kind of simple. Phones are becoming, every year, more and more beneficial to us. And this price hike is just a case of companies like Samsung and Apple seeing that and taking advantage of it. But think about this. When the first iPhone was introduced, you could take it or leave it. It was a cool way of doing stuff that similar devices could already do. But now, for a lot of people, living without a smartphone would be like living without a limb. I'd go as far as to say that there's a lot of people out there who gain more value from their smartphone than they do their car. The smartphone has already replaced a lot of people's need for a camera, for a speaker, for a tablet, for an MP3 player. And I just think as the smartphone becomes more and more intelligent, it'll start to swallow up more and more product categories, becoming ever more useful to the end user. Bit of an extreme example. But Warren Buffett, famous American businessman, he's gone on record to say that he'd rather keep his iPhone over his airplane. That his thousand dollar phone gives him more value than his multi million dollar aircraft. And finally, just inflation. The price of almost every type of product rises over time naturally. That applies to gold, that applies to chocolate, that applies to smartphones. And while the rising price of phones has exceeded inflation, inflation is a part of it. 
Okay, so about a year ago, Surfshark VPN contacted me and asked me if I wanted to partner with them. And I distinctly remember thinking, I've not heard of Surfshark VPN, but I'll give it a go, see if I like it. And I did. It does everything you need a VPN to do, like give you that peace of mind that your browsing is secure and anonymous. Also, I'd be traveling around the world for launch events, and I'd be using this to access UK Netflix while I'm sitting in China, for example. So that's fine, but now that I've been using it for about a year, it's becoming pretty clear that some, not all, but some VPNs are just daylight robbers. They'll charge you like 20 to $30 per person per month for VPN access. Surfshark costs $1.99 a month for an unlimited amount of simultaneous connections. And there are some unique features too. You've got Hacklock, which is a feature designed to give you alerts should your password or email be compromised, ensuring that the first person to take action is you. And I like that using the Surfshark app on my MacBook, I can tap once in the bar at the top and quick connect to the last server I was connected to. So check the link in the description and use the code BOSS because there's now an even bigger discount than ever. It's 85% off and an extra three months for free. Thanks a lot for watching guys. My name is Aaron. This is Mr. Who's the Boss and I'll catch you in the next one.